I can see a lot of my good friends here to talk on this and I request everybody to please wave your hand so that we know that you are there and also that will be a good test that your audio as well as well as your video is working. So I request uh, Dr. Rajesh Kotechaji. Rajesh Kotechaji is Hello, here. Namaskar. He is the secretary. Namaskar. Namaskar, Namaskar Koteja sahab. Namaskar, Rajesh Koteja ji is a secretary, Ministry of Ayush, and uh, he is one of the leading scientists and also a person who is believing in the integration of Ayush and the modern scientific tools, epidemiology, and generating evidence and taking this to the masses. And may I request Dr. Paul Nakahanso, Nakahanso, Dr. Paul, can you raise your hand? And he's a senior director, corporate partnership, John Hopkins Technology. Dr. Paul, yeah, I, 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 and I would also request my very old friend, Dr. Anil Call. Dr. Anil Call, can you? Uh, uh, I I wait for him. Dr. Anil Kaul uh, is the Vice President of Global Public Health Discovery Research in Johnson and & Johnson. And he was, for some time, he was a director in CSIR lab in India. And one of the discoverer on uh, bedaquiline, which is a drug for resistant tuberculosis. Dr. S. Chandrasekhar. I can see Dr. Chanshekhar. That's great. Dr. Chanshekhar is the director of CSIR, Indian Institute of Chemical Technology, Hyderabad. And Dr. Chanshekhar co chaired with me a committee which was set up by Ministry of uh, Department of Pharmaceuticals for promoting industry academia partnership. And we submitted our report to the government, and which was the first report having so many. Uh, stalwarts from industry, from academia, from regulator, and from the government. I see Dr. Suresh. Dr. Suresh is a, is a personality which does not require any introduction. Dr. Suresh, can you just raise your hand and say hello so that we know that your uh, audio is also working? Hi, everyone. Hi, that, that's, that's great, Dr. Suresh. Dr. Suresh is... Uh, for long, many, many years, he has been president of uh, Pharmacy Council of India and all the policy of uh, pharmacy in India today have been either nurtured, guided, and all philosophical blessings and guidance have been pro provided by Dr. Suresh. And he is basically promoting all the pharmacy colleges, how they can be really integrated with the industry to promote research. Dr. U.S.N. Murthy, one of the very dynamic uh, director, I've always called as a DD, dynamic director of uh, one of the NIPER, that is a NIPER Gohati, and uh, Dr. Uh, he is one person who so much is always bubbling with energy, not himself, but all the faculty members, the students in Niper. You get every day an SMS that one person has got an award for this innovation, for that innovation, and always linked with the industry or for purposeful. Dr. S. Sridhar. Dr. S. Sridhar. Yeah, Dr. Sridhar is here. Dr. Sridhar is the managing director of Pfizer. And... Uh, I need not to say the contribution of Pfizer in innovation and also promoting startups and research. And Dr. George, Dr. George is honorably general secretary. Dr. George, nice to see you. He is a Indian Drug Manufacturers Association and has also been part of our team when we developed this. Now, having this much of a galaxy from academia, from industry, from pharmacy council, and also from the education NIPERS is a testimony 
that all of us and of course indian pharmaceutical alliances is a testimony that today we realize that it is not good to work in silos we have been talking that industry must work with academia and academia must work in tandem with the industry and both should work aligned with the regulator and the need of the country and of course the global diversification but many years we have been talking now is the time to convert this talking into reality and to translate it in this into reality and the one committee which pankaj bhai pankaj patel chaired this a few months back last year in fact before the first time we met and we created a a blueprint under ipa and mckenzie was also our knowledge partner that what can be one two three four five steps which can be taken up not only to think but on to also to convert the thought process into academia and in industry partnership we know <clears throat> You talk of Harvard, you talk of Stanford, you talk of any bigger university abroad. The much of the thoughts from these academic institutions are translated by industry, and then those becomes the hot product. And the innovation in India, there is a disconnect between the industry and the academia. Incidentally, industry. they teach the academic product after the join industry whereas our hypo, our philosophy now is that we create industry ready products from the academic institutions and for that the industry has to collaborate with academia right from the beginning academia has to involve industry right from the curriculum designing to examination to having a startup in their setup to giving the problems to their post graduates md ms or m pharma phd which is relevant to academic uh, which is relevant to the academic to the industry both have to give the direction to the regulator that hey this is the regulatory change based on the science that you need to work fast and not that you work arbitrarily but here we are giving you the relevant evidence which can support you and make you the robust regulatory system in the world that is what it is so with this background i would request all my panelists to say it i would say a trigger talk maybe in 5 minutes or 6 minutes or 7 minutes and then we will have some question so in the same order may i request dr rajesh potecha to have his thoughts how best we can we can we can give nurturing or boost to industry academia or academia industry collaboration over to dr potecha please thank you dr gupta ji uh, actually this is a wonderful occasion and actually a, a apt uh, uh, time to look for the you know innovation journey of the indian life science industry and with a very specific topic of promoting academy industry collaboration we all know at that a different platform we discuss this uh, and then there is a lot of development in recent years Uh, for example recently uh, we all know that uh, government of india has, has you know introduced this new education policy 2020 this is uh, a very holistic and you know actually multidisciplinary uh, approach uh, having this uh, education policy and it envisages envisages the uh, uh, the kind of hr development where in real world setup industries are at one end point and for which various types of educational courses are made and uh, developing a robust interface between academia and industry 
that will help bring best version of scholars. As per this policy, as a part of holistic education, students at all higher education institutions will be provided with opportunities for internships with local industry, businesses, artists, crafts, persons, etc. So this is kind of, you know, never happened kind of thing. And this is now happening. It has started already. Uh, further into this policy, it focuses on research and innovation by setting up startup incubation centers, technology development centers, centers in frontier areas of research, greater industry academic linkages and interdisciplinary research, including humanities and social sciences research. It is interesting to know, to, to mention here that when we talk about the industry academia, we usually mean for, for health researches and, and engineering related industry. But uh, we usually do not have an, an attention to humanities and social sciences. So that is very, very important uh, uh, that has happened, the development. The, at present, at the moment, the development of educational curricula has usually not kept pace with the growing complexity of industry, technology, and economy. So moreover, research outcomes of educational institutions are typically presented to the scientific community, usually without having been directly accessible to industry. So in, within this context, it will be difficult for industry to comprehend and to adapt to the technological advances in a direct way. That is why our, our HR is not directly usable in industry when they go out. So, so that is a problem statement. But then there are so many things happening that I would like to mention uh, in, in within a given time. For example, promoting a novel integrated approach of education, research and technology transfer, it emerges as a key challenge. And uh, in health research, particularly, industry and academic collaboration has been an important vehicle to drive and implement various healthcare innovations. Uh, in COVID times, we have seen this, that uh, in a very short time, uh, the academia and industry relationship have given a wonderful example of from testing kits to tracking application to ventilators to vaccine development and to drugs and the journey from R&D to commercialization commercialization happened faster than ever seen before. So uh, actually, the another area which needs attention is that R&D is a capital intensive activity, which neither any government nor industry can afford individually. We all know that. In India, nearly more than two thirds of the finances for R&D is provided by the public sector and government and less than one third is shared by the private sector. If you compare it with the other uh, countries, particularly developed world, uh, reverse trend is observed. So a thorough study is required to understand how Indian private sector can be stimulated for enhancing the investments in R&D. So realizing this importance, uh, I, I would like to talk a little bit about Ministry of Ayush, what we are doing to, to uh, fast track these uh, linkages. For example, we did uh, we have this center of excellence uh, scheme. So we support research institutes, labs, and even industry labs and research activities through the COE, and it has yielded very great results. You know, some some of the good publications, good outcomes, good translation of those outcomes has happened. The Ayush industry is currently undergoing a significant transition. Uh, yesterday only our honorable prime minister in, in his in, in his uh, remarks during the inauguration of this event he, he mentioned that herbal medicine sector has shown export of about 1.5 billion us dollar it, it is uh, the total size of the industry is now 18.1 billion dollar is a manufacturing industry so it has never happened this is like something uh, a sunrise sector we can say there is a 17% growth year on year since six years. So um, we have this, this mechanism of uh, uh, industry friendly industry academia partnership ecosystem with our research councils and our uh, national institutes. And there are a lot of outcomes. For example, recently we have repurposed the medicine IU64 for the mild to moderate COVID patients. And then uh, as soon as we repurposed it, we were able to transfer the technology to more than 29 industry 
and they immediately have rolled out uh, this medicine and it was available all over the country without any shortage of uh, the supply then also uh, there is another example that th we are working with thsti uh, for the development and mechanic studies of lot of ius drugs and uh, thsti as an outcome of this expertise have signed uh, an mo with dabar india for joint development of herbal extracts and therapeutics for non alcoholic fatty liver disease this is a good example of how translation happens we have already instituted of ayurved under uh, ministry of ayush has recently you know started working with uh, london school of hygiene and tropical medicine lhstm L lshtm to conduct a clinical trial on ashwagandha for promoting recovery from covid-19 in uk on very big cohort and we are envisaging that this will provide us a very good proof of evidence so that we can pro project ashwagandha as one of the post covid solution in in uh, globally so those type of examples we have uh, immense and another example is ministry in collaboration with fssai is is working on launching ayurved ahar category to promote ayurveda based food industry and there is a lot of potential lot of commerce uh, is available already so at last we are ahead that i want to mention there are some focus uh, points uh, as mentioned by dr gupta that what is take home so suggestions are ensure curriculum adaptation moves as fast as the pace of industry change so there is a fast change faster change of industry and our education our academia should ensure that there is a adaptation of those demands then build up relationship with industry and career advisors the another is uh, tailor made education for example uh, small and medium size enterprises we have made provision for skill development courses in convergence with skill development ministry so it is not only transfer of technology it is also providing able hr to the industry then mutually enabling processes for capacity building of the faculty students and the industry more dialogues then experts engaged in arranged already works in the industry uh, may be invited as visit visiting faculties in in higher education institutes in ayush sector we already have started this and involvement of big industry in healthcare sector and all other sectors is a whole government approach for promoting evidence based uh, products and solutions particularly in the area of healthcare and medicine to be translated into public health and a major export sector of india in ayush sector there is a tremendous opportunity as mentioned by our honorable prime minister thank you so much thank you professor gupta ji namaskar thank you thank you very much uh, dr potecha i think your key message is so good and uh, so hammering that uh, i think not many people have touched that the humanities and social science is one thing which academic institutions can teach to the industry and i think that is what very important thing and you have very rightly highlighted the success of ayush in the covid situation and that too the the uh, the ayush uh, 69 which is now being transferred to it is a basically academic product which has gone to so many industry now and uh, also what you have mentioned not only the ayush products are being collaborated with indian industry but also with the outside india the academic institutions i think uh, uh, your points are very well taken and maybe we can take up them again during the during the discussion now i would now request uh, dr paul nakahanso the senior director corporate partnership john hopkins uh if he can uh, hear me dr paul absolutely thank you dr gupta uh, dr paul and, uh, yeah and, and greetings to all um it's an honor to be part of this great panel and you know i would probably want to start by sharing the experiences uh within john hopkins technology ventures and some of the transformation has actually occurred um, within Hopkins over the last six, seven years, and maybe germane and relevant to this conversation. So sometime in 2013, 
uh, the university president actually commissioned a, an assessment to be done, uh, a peer benchmarking exercise, really. And the idea being that, you know, most of you would know copying strength in medicine, in public health. Um, and for 39 years in a row, John Hopkins has pretty much received the largest in federal funding for basic science research. What was at the core of this assessment, though, was the fact that innovation is not just invention. It's invention and then commercialization. And within the Hopkins ecosystem, as productive as they were, it was clear that industry partnership, translation and commercialization of these great assets was not taking place, at least at the scale that uh, should have occurred. And so this assessment actually unraveled many elements of this. Um, so in 2014, a year later, the committee that actually did this assessment came up with findings and recommendations. And one of them was actually to make an investment in this area, and $76 million investment was made. An office was created to centralize commercialization and translation. It included everything from licensing, in technology transfer and development, to sponsored research um, and partnerships, and created space in terms of facilities and equipment uh, for the purposes of startups and venture. Okay? So this is an integrated office, it's actually the office in which I sit. And what has happened since 2014 is that all the matrices that, that would determine translation and commercialization has actually doubled, and in some cases quadrupled. For instance, last year, our venture and startups raised $1 billion. Right? If you compare this to any of the great institutions around the world, this is by far among the 1%. Um, if you look at sponsored research, uh, we currently manage to the order of about 50 uh, partnerships with industry in, in different sectors, uh, majority of it being in life sciences, of course. Uh, if you look at licensing, we are now averaging 144 licensing a year. This number probably doubles, you know, what used to be the case in you know, 2014. Um, 400 reports of inventions per year. So one of the elements I want to capture here is, is the culture of innovation, that that is an important element. You know, bringing to bear a culture within an institution in a context of India, creating that environment is, is a key component. The second component I want to highlight has to do with making sure that partnerships are strategic. So if you go back and look at the basis for partnerships within John Hopkins, it has to fulfill a number of requirements, okay? So our partners are not just coming in to license technology. They are oftentimes engaging us even in the education of, you know, of, of our postdocs, our graduate students, right? In curriculum development and refinement. Uh, some of them serve on thesis committees, right? They provide uh, support by way of training uh, to some of our startups. Right, because there are elements, of course, as you imagine in commercialization that, you know, the translation component of commercialization actually sits within industry. Now, industry is, is, is well placed to take basic science and take it over that, you know, valley of death and actually make it a product. So that complementarity between academics and industry is actually where the, the, the winning formula lies. And that recognition of a partnership that entails so many different facets um, is one that I think is, is a very important one to highlight. Uh, we also seek, you know, industries input in advisory boards, right, to, to guide our startups. So this is a strategic uh, approach to partnership. And I think that's the second element I would like to highlight. Then finally, you know, perhaps talk, I would like to talk a little bit about what I think are some of the conditions, right, that could help foster 
the aspirations that India has um, towards, you know, a successful, innovative ecosystem. Um, I think an enabling environment is, is a key one to highlight, right? Um, oftentimes what this means is that we have to think about what the incentives are for all the key stakeholders, for academic institutions, for industry partners uh, that will come to the table. Um, because this is a very expensive endeavor. And oftentimes if you want to actually be successful, you have to kind of think about, you know, what, what would be appropriate incentives to, to move the needle uh, on all these different facets. So a key element of this is of course, creating an integrated sort of platform that will foster partnership. So training, right, and building talents around not just the science, but the business and regulatory aspects um, of your life science industry will be important. Right, funding, of course, key element to all of this. So bringing in venture funding, private equity funding, all important aspects of this. Then providing the infrastructure, space and equipment, right? It's something that should be a shared endeavor between of course governments, academic institutions and corporate partners. Um, and then, you know, having a very strong culture around patents and licensing and sponsored research. Another important sort of uh, element to that enabling environment, okay? And of course, I think my, my fellow panelists spoke about policies. Policies are so important. And one element of that is actually streamlining policies. You know, addressing institutional review boards, you know, ethics committee, making all those processes very efficient. Um, federal funding mechanisms to be very transparent to allow both academic and industry to be able to I, I think uh, Dr. Paul's audio got some disruption. Anyway, Dr. Paul, it, it was wonderful listening to the experience from John Hopkins. And uh, uh, are you back or you, is it you have done? Can you hear me? Uh, ah, yeah, no, it, it was break in between. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yes, yes. Yeah, my apologies for that. So, so just the last point, the last point is education and curriculum development, right? Important and one way we found this to be helpful is to think about encouraging foreign universities to partner so that there are exchange of ideas, right? Uh, with your Indian institutions, uh, our students, and of course incentivizing local students. And then the final element might be public-private partnerships which as you saw, even within uh, COVID was an important element to true innovation um, that translated to some of the solutions by way of diagnostics and therapeutics and vaccines that, uh, that were brought to bear. So, so hope, hope these elements um, were, were helpful, but I wanted to articulate the John Hopkins experience in commercialization uh, and I wanted to share with you what I thought were some lessons learned uh, as you move forward uh, in India to, to, to meet your ambitions and goals. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Paul. I think the experience of uh, John Hopkins uh, are so good. And uh, we have taken note of it. Some of them we are already been emphasizing again and again, as you rightly said, culture of innovation. And maybe there could be some of the messages which could be taken up by Dr. Suresh, who is basically, I would say, the guiding the entire pharmacy institutions in the country. And also Dr. Murthy, who is responsible for giving the dynamics to, to the NIPERS. 
and um, and many others because if we have a a say a culture of innovation developed and with that integrated office for uh, sub providing regulatory support financial support idea transfer and giving them the possibility how to take it to the market i think uh, that will be the perhaps the correct steps and you have shown that the number of uh, patents number of innovations have almost doubled in very few years i think that's a very important point with this i would request my friend dr anil call uh, who has the experience of industry who has the experience of guiding in a very innovative uh, oriented uh, academic uh, come research institution of csir uh, that is imtech in india and now one of the leader in developing bedacoline so dr anil to you Oh, sir, uh, it's so nice to see you. It's so nice to see you, and it's a pleasure uh, to be here in this uh, August company of experts. Uh, so I think it's uh, first of all, thank you. Uh, thank you for giving me this invitation to be here. I was so pleased to be uh, coming to this forum because uh, the idea itself innovate. Uh, and develop uh, for the Indian pharmaceutical industry is so, so relevant. I, I can't tell you how, how passionate I am about it because in the end, we are all scientists and, uh, uh, and innovation, we know how it changes the lives of the people across the world. So I think uh, from my perspective, this is a topic, as I said, that it's very close to my heart because what I have learned, I can give you first my experience of j, &J then I come back to uh, Indian R&D ecosystem, and then I can uh, come to uh, what are the key drivers of basically the uh, industry academy or collaborations. So from uh, what I learned uh, over uh, several years right now uh, in j, &J where I'm leading the global public health uh, discovery R&D, so within the global public health uh, scenario, as well as within the J&J R&D ecosystem, the mantra is that what we call open innovation. So a lot of you have heard this word uh, several times, open innovation. And the open innovation, it basically means that the best ideas don't always come from your own labs. You have to be receptive. You have to be collaborative. You have to be open-minded to embrace innovation coming from anywhere in the world, whether it's an innovation for public health coming from African continent, whether it's the innovation uh, coming from uh, Asia, whether it's an innovation coming from India. So we have to respect every idea which is coming uh, and which can, of course, uh, change the science, change the trajectory of uh, 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 yeah, human well-being. So that's one thing. So what j, j did a few years ago was a very path-breaking uh, uh, path structural, uh, uh, structural elements where in they set up what we call five innovation centers across the globe. So the aim of these five innovation centers was to reach out to academic institutions uh, in that, those particular regions, like one innovation center is in Boston, one is in California, one is in Shanghai, one is in UK, and one as uh, one is somewhere uh, else. So, so in, in there are five innovation centers, and there are sub centers also. So, the aim of these innovation centers was to tap in to the academic R and D which is happening because that's something. So you you proactively go to the academic institutions and say look your idea of this is so interesting to us let's collaborate let's build this idea let's as paul already said that it's not only the idea the monetization of the idea and bringing it to the product is completely different ball game so that's where we have had those uh, innovation centers coming through their legal processes coming through their uh, financial structures coming through their very dedicated teams, helping the uh, industries, helping the, indus uh, helping the academic tech offices to basically uh, promote more open collaboration. 
I think this has been really successful, as you can see uh, from the J&J's evolution in the last 10 years in terms of the R&D output has been really, really successful. And a lot of contribution for that success goes to those academic partners, those scientists who work in the academia and whose ideas were so, so nice that they eventually led to very uh, fruitful uh, technological e evolution. So that's one what we call industry going proactively to the academic centers and saying that, OK, this is uh, this is the space where we can collaborate. So it's not all, always the academia has to reach the industry, but industry should be uh, thoughtful enough and mature enough to have faith in the academic science and uh, reach out to them. The second thing what uh, we have been actively doing is what we call uh, these, uh, we call them J-Labs. J-Labs are basically, we create these bio-incubator spaces uh, and uh, we, uh, we basically, with no strings attached, we ask anybody who has an idea and who can uh, bring that idea and you op use the space, you use the infrastructure, you use the lab, and everything what you do is all everything you are, of course, you are own. So that has led to almost 150 companies across the world, small companies, biotech companies, very, very small one person companies or 10 person. Those companies have matured into now massive uh, biotechs with, uh, with huge potential. Uh, and all what j, &J provided was them was the idea for, for incubation and space and ecosystem for innovation. So definitely this has helped a lot in terms of building up that particular uh, uh, support system for the, those early stage companies. And now some of these companies valuation go in billions of dollars and it has really created a huge value for the uh, public health space as well as the scientific innovation space. So these were the, uh, I, there are several other examples. I, I don't have time to discuss all those details, but the key has been to have an open innovation mindset and help uh, basically the, uh, reach out to the academic institutions and, uh, and look for those technologies. I think uh, from the Indian perspective, I can tell you that India is one of the finest academic institutions in the world. Some of them, I can tell you that they are untapped uh, the, uh, there are enough resources which the government is building up, has spent our, uh, our decades in building up these institutions. And that, and that scientific pool, both in terms of the new generation of science which is happening, the aspirational young Indians which are out there, there is an immense potential in terms of Indian institutions to deliver novel innovation on their own as well as in partnership with industry. So it, it definitely needs uh, uh, the leadership focus in terms of uh, in delivering on that science which is happening in those uh, Indian institutions to bring them into the final products. So uh, I can give you one example. As I was in Imtech, we had a fantastic institution uh, 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 collaborations with companies like Merck where it was not only on the products, it's also on the skill development side, uh, which they came forward, set up skill development institutions, uh, and now they are training uh, thousands of students in terms of uh, new uh, biotech technologies, which are the latest, which are the most novel, and, and it basically helps the students in, in a lot. It's not only the technologies which industry can partner. It's in the skill development side where industry should play a very important role because in the end, those skills definitely help industry uh, much better than, uh, than, uh, than if we don't promote any uh, novel skill development. So apart from that, I think we had a, a, we had a fantastic collaboration with Zydus Kedela on TB uh, in terms of the small drug development. Once again, a very, a very novel collaboration where two different partners using the expertise of, uh, of uh, institutions like CSR and using the uh, expertise of Zydus coming together and trying to build, uh, uh, build programs for the diseases that impact the poorest of the poor and have a huge impact on the uh, Indian uh, basically healthcare systems. So just these are just few examples I'm trying to say. All I'm trying to say is that Indian institutions themselves are mature enough for global partners to come and 
and uh, and bring uh, bring capital, uh, bring talent, as well as uh, as well as develop uh, ideas which are uh, which were uh, which are uh, basically uh, being uh, being experimented in the Indian labs. So it goes uh, not only for infectious diseases; it goes from infectious diseases to neuroscience, uh, and with the Indian patient population, which is so huge. It's not only the science scientific institutions. India has one of the biggest uh, hospitals, which sees uh, like PGI Chandigarh. I can give you an example. It sees 10,000 patients a day. I think the amount of data which we are uh, creating in those institutions, no country in the world will have that access to the real patient population data in real time. And, and with those kind of numbers in terms of data analytics, data science, these are the key drivers of the future innovation in the healthcare industry. So, uh, so, so uh, and in the same space like ILBS, uh, the fantastic work they are doing in the liver hepatology uh, uh, regard means uh, as, uh, uh, as was said by earlier uh, speaker, the the role of uh, the role of some of these uh, medications in non uh, Nash products. So th th this is something which is heavily uh, 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 heavily discussed and heavily uh, he heavily investigated scientific area. Where in uh, once again the uh, and the Indian population, the patient population, the expertise, the doctors, what we have, the clinicians, what we have, have a huge impact. And of course the future of the new scientists which are coming out through our systems have a huge aspirational uh, uh, role to play in uh, in delivering the science. So, and I think beyond, yes. I think I, I have just one more point to mention. Uh, it's it's important from the, from the perspective of um, looking at the R&D budget. The R&D budget of a nation right now uh, in the Indian contest is basically uh, heavily dependent on the government funding. What we need to do is to see how do does industry promote more uh, more R&D within the Indian uh, ecosystem and how do we enable that R&D ecosystem. So we, uh, I can tell you at JNJ, we are setting up these satellite discovery centers for global public health across the world. And India is one of the focus which I am trying to push because I know that for public health, India is the best place to be in terms of the R&D innovation. So definitely, I think uh, there is a lot of scope and uh, it's not only India, but across the world, we should really be open to innovation wherever it is coming from. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Anil. You are one of the very strong proponent that industry should go to academia. I think that's one thing which I think I would like to take message for all. And I wish there are many, many clone of Anil in the country. That means though you see the countries uh, now industry is so keen to collaborate with the academic institution. But what you also emphasize is that not only going to industry the academia to scout the ideas, but also to provide these good ideas, funding opportunities. What is happening today, majority of the industry go to the academic institution only when they want to hire. But what we now emphasize, don't go to only hire, but go to take up the scout, the ideas which the academic institutions have in their in the field and then scout them, nurture them, fund them, and then hire them. That's I think wonderful idea which you gave. So with this, now we request uh, Dr. S. Chandrasekhar, who is the director of uh, IICT, handling more than 300 PhD students and one of the CSIR lab, which has the largest number of uh, academic and industry collaboration and uh, <clears throat> a very good part of their uh, revenue is also generated from industry by giving them technical know-how and lot many API and the projects of, uh, of uh, tech transfer have taken place from 
from CSIR lab, particularly IICT and pharmaceutical industry. And Dr. Chanshekar was integral part of our committee when we developed a, a very big report on industry academia collaboration. So over to Dr. Chanshekar, please. Thank you, Professor Gupta, for a very exciting introduction on me and also on CSIR. You have been a great proponent of CSIR. Thank you, Professor Gupta. And uh, friends, I think uh, lots of uh, words are said on how industry academia collaboration happens. And we have heard from the large multinationals, the way they tap the talent, knowledge, and how they connect to the academia. I think uh, one big gap still we continue to see is uh, the industry-ready human resource. And uh, every time I interact with the CEOs and chairmen of the companies, uh, they keep uh, complaining that uh, the graduates coming out of the academic institutes are really not ready to take up the challenges and they need to invest a lot of time and energy to see that they are ready for taking up the initial kind of work. And as uh, Professor Gupta mentioned, we have given many recommendations to the government, uh, including conducting the joint PhD programs, uh, allowing the private industry to have uh, their small R&D units within the academic campuses so that the culture of industry is inculcated into the academic uh, institutes. We all know industry, academia is driven by publications, citations, whether we get a postdoc or not, the promotion is driven by the kind of fundamental science we do. And only when an industry sponsors the project, we tend to take up those challenges. And uh, it's time that industry also starts throwing their challenges uh, using some common portals because science is universal and science has no boundaries. If, for example, J&J &J or uh, Pfizer or Merck has a challenge, uh, I'm sure they could throw a challenge without disclosing the integrity of the I mean, integrities of the project and uh, academic uh, faculty could uh, give some solutions and those solutions could be taken forward. As uh, my friend from Johnson told, uh, I'm sure I think if... Uh, the labs like J labs are built across by all industries, not just by, by the Johnson, but other companies also start trying to build those labs where they allow the ideas of the academic uh, colleagues uh, is put to practice. Uh, as Professor Gupta was mentioning, uh, innovation is part of every individual. I think innovation happens day in, day out. It's not just the trait of an industry or a scientist. Uh, even someone staying at home or a retired colleague or a high school kid or a school teacher could have an innovative idea. And the government of India has been collecting all those ideas, not only from uh, these colleagues, but also grassroots innovations, which are coming out of uh, small towns, villages and all that. And we have a national uh, innovation foundation where over 1.5 lakh ideas are stored. And it's a time that industry reviews all those ideas and segregate them into which are useful to health sector because you're talking on behalf of IPA today. Could we take all those ideas which are relevant to health sector and see whether some of those could be either sponsored as projects, uh, handhold those ideas, work with some academic institutes and take them from an idea. As Professor Gupta said, ideas are always easy to get, but idea into a bench scale demonstration, proof of concept, go to a pilot plant scale, and then do an attempt on the commercialization. And when you take from bench scale to pilot plant and commercial, that's where I think funds are required. And that's where if industry and academia funding agencies from the government, if they could put some grants and see that these bench scale ideas are mentored to take to a pilot scale, I think those ideas could become really useful products. I think that's what I think uh, when you look at the ecosystem, what uh, a friend from the US was talking on, how the ideas uh, were converted into products. So I think we need to learn a few things from there. While a lot of things are happening in the country already, looking at the investments uh, DBT makes on BIRAC or DST and CSIR through many programs, it's the time that uh, a small idea, a small proof of concept in the publication how you could really scale up into a pilot and then make into a product. I think that's what I think we need to concentrate. Other one, of course, is the challenge of providing the best human resource. Uh, 
many colleges and universities in the country currently have don't have the best equipment or infrastructure to perform experiments for them i think industry should embrace uh, all the graduate students in their fourth semester or the last semester whatever they take up in pharmacy or btech or msc i think allow them a little bit of freedom to join their industries for six months eight months get hands on experience and what they do actually it's a very standard culture across the world i'm sure those young minds would not uh, take away those ideas or products and go somewhere i think we need to really trust those young kids and then allow them to work on projects in industrial campuses expose to those cultures so that when they really come out of a graduate program i think they were really allowed to go back to industry many students think that no no getting a job in uh, academia is more secure no one is ask me what i should do i can do what i like to do i think that's the kind of free mind uh, we provide to these young minds i think industry also should start giving at least at the early part of their careers when they join industry allow them to give a little bit of free thought process i think give a small grant that you nurture your idea publish a paper or file a patent i think rather than day one you give them a targeted work i think your job is by end of this year you increase the yield from 40% to 80% otherwise you are fine i think uh, then the best minds don't go to industry they tend to hang on around as postdocs with us and then come back and look for an academic job i think if that kind of freedom is given in the industry i'm sure uh, the collaborations between academia and industry go a long way also if you look at uh, the infrastructure being built by the academia now is phenomenal if you look at the infrastructure built uh, uh, with sifs uh, we call i think uh, sophisticated advanced instrumentation facilities uh, built across the industry i think we need to make sure that industry also come and use those facilities so that academy also get start some revenue to take those projects forward thank you thank you thank you very much sir dr shankar i think you have given an idea uh, very clear concept that the idea coming from academic institution then the proof of concept then the pilot project then the commercial project in between there has to be hand holding and support from industry and then the product and that's why there has to be mechanism of incentivization there has to be mechanism of a de risking or risking or minimum risk and for that there are a couple of mechanisms but uh, the direction which dr chanshakan has been providing to their phd's and their scholars is phenomenal and we always look forward for the guidance of leaders like dr chanshakan dr b suresh is the person who has been keeping the pharmacy institution of the entire country is so dynamic vibrant and always ready to work or industry ready human resource is always his challenge so over to dr suresh uh thank you dr gupta and uh, it's a pleasure to be back here uh, uh, with you on this platform actually the indian pharmaceutical alliance organizers asked me to join uh, uh the session yesterday to interact with you and get to know how things have been i said no i know how dr gupta will conduct so i don't need further training i know uh, how he will lead us through the thing so it's pleasure back uh, to be with you here on dr gupta and um, i would uh, like to thank again indian pharmaceutical alliance uh, for inviting me to share my thoughts uh, on this platform in fact i have a very now close relationship with indian pharmaceutical alliance uh, the pharmacy council of india and uh, ipa have been now almost for more than 3 years uh, engaging together on various issues uh, and one of the uh, very important factors uh, that have been uh, under discussion has been the industry academia cooperation how does it go back and um, we instead of looking at just uh, pushing or motivating we wanted to get into action and uh, the indian pharmaceutical alliance came forward and pci also came forward and said let us both be catalyst uh, to make this industry uh, academia collaboration to come together uh, to happen and uh, what we realized was uh, uh, one of the major challenges which uh, is there existing in the Uh, academia is a real insight into industry and the industry expectations uh, whether it is uh, the human resource like just said uh, 
uh, now inter industry ready uh, manpower that is required or for research or the other factors that are coming to the uh, need uh, of the industry is not really connected. So we said that we'll come together on this platform, both of us together, and we signed an MOU. And uh, the PCI decided that we will try to fund 100 teachers who would like to work in an industry for one month and get the training. And uh, vice versa, Indian Pharmaceutical Alliance committed through their member organizations they will place these 100 teachers in the company. They don't have to hunt around. The Indian Pharmaceutical Alliance will do this responsibility, identify based on the geographical need and location and put them in the plants which they can be there and the teachers can spend uh, their time of uh, almost one month to understand the industry expectation. In the first round of such uh, experiment, we got in about 30 teachers from different institutions across the country and uh, we have placed them in the industry and uh, this just one month is just over. And I can say that uh, there has been a great success story for both of us to share. And we are getting a lot of reviews now uh, from the institutions asking us when the next batch is going to be sent out. And this is going to be a continuous commitment which both the Indian Pharmaceutical Alliance and uh, uh, PCI has made to first get the capacity building, as we call it, among the teachers uh, by providing them industrial training or industrial immersions, which is required. Now, talking about uh, the industry academia uh, cooperation itself, uh, there are three factors which I uh, consider as very important. One is uh, the desire, like, you know, the institution should have the desire and the institution, uh, the industry should also desire, yeah, I would like to work with the uh, industry or vice versa and try to achieve some maximizing the process. This desire should be there. Second is the capability. See, I may have a desire, but I do not have the capability to either uh, support the industry or vice versa. Uh, how do I do it? So the capability is very important. And third is the coming together of both these things and trying to find out how we can uh, uh, complement each other, the desire and capability, how can be done. But everything goes with success stories. And in fact, I would like to give a a cue to the industry like you may say there are so many pharmacy institutions across the country how do we know whom to collaborate what is the outcome which you are going to achieve today there are a lot of uh, opportunity a lot of uh, indicators that are available for the industry to identify institutions where they with whom they would like to collaborate just uh, as was told by um, dr anil call that industry should be proactive and go out to the uh, institution so they can do that and they can do it like the targeted delivery system. They can go to a targeted institution and find out, are you interested? How do you achieve that? Today, you have the NIRF ranking, which talks about uh, the top 100 institutions. You can try to look at, you can look at through the various uh, research findings which come on the various uh, platforms of Elsevier or uh, Stanford researchers and all that. You will try to find out easily where and what type of research is going on. And you can focus that, okay, this is what I want. And this is the institution where I should do. And this is the person I have to meet and talk to. I think it's very easy now compared to what was 10 years ago or 20 years ago. So if the industry desires to collaborate with uh, the institution and they want to check whether the institution has the capability, I think with these indicators, it's very easy to find out uh, that the, this capability is there and the desire is there. Let us go and reach out to them and work. I think this is one of the things which I would like to give here as a suggestion. And uh, moving forward, I would like to say uh, definitely an important role is to be played in uh, by the industry in making industry ready graduates, as we say, and uh, curriculum development and uh, including of the what interest the industry is looking at uh, can always be done. But uh, to really bring all 100% industry ready, uh, uh, what you call as graduates is going to be a challenge for any uh, any organization to bring in because the industry's needs vary across the uh, uh, across the platform. And uh, what we know you should do is, are we creating a graduate who is a quick thinker, a willing adapter, and being able to change and innovate and move forward? And I think these are the qualities and trainings that the student should have and that the council is uh, uh, trying to work with uh, closely. And uh, when I was again discussing with the Indian Pharmaceutical Alliance and the president, chairman of the alliance, I was there in one of the meetings, and uh, they said one of the indicators they want when you ask what type of human resource you want, 
they want they said the a, a human resource who can do multiple roles if needed like if the company has to uh, change its direction they should not hunt for somebody new and find somebody in a specialist area but the person available with the industry uh, should be able to capable have should have the capability to move to the next area that type of resource is what the industry is expecting so we are trying to bring those type of competencies and capabilities in the graduates where they are able to adapt and learn faster rather than learning only by the uh, road i think these are the changes which uh, we are trying to move forward in the uh, effort one of the things again like uh, what uh, uh, dr chandrashekar also mentioned and anil kaul also mentioned the needs of the industry has shifted in the past two decades and uh, the curriculum the teachers all have to align with that i said now there is a great focus on health tech and preventive health these are the two focus areas which are coming in and uh, we are looking at exploring how do we strengthen uh, the uh, the cap uh, the the what you call as the foundation for the pharmacy graduates and related post graduates to have an insight into these areas so that they again meet the industry's uh, change in expectations i would like to add that uh, uh, one of the things i would like to even put across to this uh, indian pharmaceutical association here uh, just it came as a thought in uh, the discussion of resources and funding uh, came up i think indian pharmaceutical alliance can go with a new concept of pooling some of their resources uh, on common problems which all their industry or industry members are requiring it may be a common problem relating to a solution and they can open this up as a challenge to anybody in the who can give a solution and if they are able to uh, adapt that into a solution uh, they are ready to fund and uh, take it further from there uh, i think this type of new innovative ways of attracting the best brains is very important that's what happens more on the engineering side if you look at the engineering or the industry sector uh, on the technology sector i have been having a close twist uh, now recently i have asked to overview some of our technical institutions also uh, from my organization where i am working and uh, when i am looking at those aspects there the opportunity which exists is the industry opens up challenges like we want to do this anybody can give a solution we will come and uh, work with you further and do it and there are other people from the industry who are ready to help these institutions to achieve this goal i'll just uh, give a example uh, uh, one small example there was a project relating to launching of a nano satellite at an engineering college uh, there was another agency which would, was ready to help the institution to build a nano satellite and they brought in a third uh, organization into place like uh, what would nano satellite in space do and then where i chip in can we do something related to health can it help in capturing some of the health related uh, issues so i think these type of challenges should be thrown open and that that's the way it is there and that brings us to the fold of interdisciplinary research is see, something which we have to move forward i can go on talking uh, dr gupta you know <laughs> very well but i thought i'll leave this uh, uh, thoughts here in this platform and i would like to once again congratulate indian pharmaceutical alliance where for their very very forward thinking because i have worked with many organizations they all talk and they say okay let's see but here indian pharmaceutical alliance said we will do it let's start that was their thing and they chase me every day when are we going to do this next i think it's a great effort from the indian pharmaceutical alliance thank you i must congratulate uh, dr suresh for your initiative taking uh, assurance of taking 100 teachers to industry and i must congratulate industry for agreeing to this 30 have already gone now i i urge you that when we meet next on any such forum you must increase this number maybe from 100 to 1000 that would be the wonderful thing which we can do if the teachers in these pharmacy institutions get this feel and industry get this feel by both this is the wonderful mechanism which you have suggested which never occurred to us and i think we will add to our report this very very prominently and i must tell all the audience here <laughs> dr suresh is never so keen in attending nipers because they are already leaders but he i have seen he trying to create leaders from the two tier academic institutions so they let there be 50 nipers like and that's why i say nipers 
role should handhold the two tier institution bring them to the industry and i think that is why this 100 is is a very very magical number so thank you very much dr suresh now to listen to this uh, and now the dr murthy and i said that uh, i call him the dd dynamic director of uh, of nipers and uh, he has converted uh, Niper Gohati into one of the very, very versatile, very active Niper, Dr. Murthy. Uh, are we, we have been warned that we are now left 10 minutes. So maybe uh, though everybody has uh, so much of wisdom to suggest, but uh, we may have to look for some other opportunity also. I have received your cold warning and i will complete it i will never disappoint you by taking more time thank you very much dr gupta ji dr chandrasekhar and other dignitaries dr rajesh and my very good supporter of naipur dr suresh and all uh, thank you very much first of all ipa for uh, taking this progressive step to make it that industry academia let me tell you a bit openly we are talking about the industry academia for the past four decades i think the fruits are started coming only few years back only let me tell you very quickly because i am a product of csir i know that we are simply talking but who is going to build the cat that is only important but someone will definitely build the cat if you have a spark i have been asked to answer two questions they have ipa also categorically given to uh, what are the innovative research uh, going on in the nipers i am generalizing i am the spokesperson as of now for for this particular event on behalf of seven nipers as you are aware bulk drugs api because all seven nipers are across uh, spreaded across the country geographically and they also identified one one specialized area to take up as their primary research in their respective institutes bulk drugs and api by hyderabad of course doesn't mean that rest of the nipers are not doing and uh, niper gahoti is uh, sitting on the gold mine and uh, because it is the richest biodiversity area we have got almost 120 formulations in the hand given by the various uh, traditional healers whose products are non-scientifically uh, tested against various diseases. They have been treated, but they cannot see the light of the day by going to the market. But that's why Niper is providing pre-clinical data to them so that A plus B is equal to ABA is a product. So including government Ayurvedic colleges in Northeast, they knock on the door of Niper for providing the preclinical. This is one of the, <clears throat> the strong point of the NIPER to go to the public, first industry followed by society. We should not forget the second point, very, very important society. So formulation is very important. Whatever the molecule, you may be having celebrity molecule in your hand, unless the formulation support is there, it cannot go to the uh, field applications. And generic drugs, this is the national mission where we have been introduced to the generic godown by our Mansuk Mandiya when he was the MOS. Now he is the full-fledged minister. And the quality control and quality assurance. The people are coming with the products until unless you give the GLP standards and GLP standards, they cannot go to the market. Whereas Naipur Gahoti has got almost eight national centers. Very happy to share. Center of Excellences and all. This is only the Naipur that has got this many national centers. And uh, Naipur are also doing the, other than the academic as well as the research, we are into the national building programs. For example, Naipur Gahoti is one of the institute to be an integral part of the NLEM, which is headed by Dr. Balram as well as Professor Gupta ji. And we are there, whatever small squirrel support to the Rama, we also did something for the generating that report and all. Most important thing I want to draw your attention is after uh, industry or before industry, there is a society. We have to do the, something to the society because one third of the tribal population are those in the Northeast itself. Their health status need to be checked. Their children health nutrition status need to be checked. We are also doing that kind of work through a center of excellence by tribal affairs. So these are all the things our cutting edge technologies we are doing. And uh, when we come to the most important thing is medical device. I need not tell much about the medical device. Our market by 2020 is 11 billion and it is expected when by some production forecasting agencies by 2024 it is the 65 billion dollars so our unfortunately 70 to 80 percent of the import to dependency is there for the medical device 
for such a huge number of diseases which are emerging re-emerging we need to have a strong manpower qualitative manpower that is why medical devices also started recently and not only course wise even some of the nipers have been given a responsibility to start up the small scale medical device testing facility so in the northeast i cannot expect i to start the nmr and uh, lcms testing facility and i can say small scale whatever yes msme who can knock the door of naipur gauti we started of course mohali can take up in a big way hyderabad also can take up in a big way that is another testing facility is also established and uh, second question what they asked they, that naipurs can be an anchor for promoting the industry academia answer straight away objective answer is yes and unless we have a spark no industry will come but only thing is indian conditions we are excellent in working poor in networking we should have a network with the industry and when you wanted to talk to the industry there is a three step process one is contractual collaboration finally product oriented these are all the things curriculum also should be it is already spoken by dr suresh curriculum also should be tuned and all for all these things whatever we speak whatever who anyone speak our idea should be good our intention should be good then ultimately output also should be definitely good yad bhavam tad bhavati thank you very much sir thank you thank, thank you, you very, very much thank you I very much dr i think i am within the time i think so very well very well time and very well focused and you said very important point that there is need to have an spark and there is one stone is academia other stone is industry and the faculty like naipur is a rubbing factor which yes. if rubbed in a right proportion it will give spark right spark so i congratulate you for giving this idea dr shridhar is the is the chief of uh, of pfizer and we know that the pfizer has been supporting lot of startups like many other and uh, many of those startups uh, has become a good entrepreneur and this is how iits and other institutions which pfizer has been supporting is in fact a correct example of how academia and industry linkage can be set up by these startups so over to dr shridhar mr shridhar yeah, thank you and thank you dr gupta for the nice introduction i also want to thank ipa for inviting me here wonderful wonderful topic wonderful summit and great great agenda once again congratulations ipa so my view is academy and uh, industry partnership was critical is critical will be critical now if you, if you heard dr abhitab khan's uh, speech he said india needs to move to a innovation hotbed and i do believe academic partnerships can be a simpler way or an easier way to achieve their objective than individual companies trying to do the work on their own so therefore i do believe it's an important thing to have going forward and i believe there are two ways of achieving the objective one is through the commercial route and second is a social causes route both are very distinct methodologies and strategies however both of them need a one common purpose that is have a clarity of what we want to do and what is the alignment we want to have otherwise the ocean is so very big we all will get lost in trying to do it your purpose is very clear your outcome is very clear want to look at it then go target it and then work, work towards trying to with the industry associations i believe there are about three or four ways of collaborating it we spoke about early molecular discovery i do believe it's a very very simpler way to really help in the industry to fast track some of the innovations there for example pfizer has got partnership with multiple multiple global institutes we call it centers for therapeutic innovations and we call innovative target exploration network across all the global institutes including hopkins including washington university cambridge etc and these centers actually work with pfizer in the research laboratories coordinate together and develop programs together pfizer helps in terms of clinical research regulatory pathway and then leverages the in, in, yeah, universities to help them with the knowledge base i think that is the kind of partnership we need to really enhance going forward second thing is uh, dr gupta you spoke of incubation of startups i do believe there are 40000 startups in the country many many startups but they're all in different different shape and forms they need some guidance coaching not only in terms of ideation whether it's commercially viable 
whether it is regulatory pathway, clinical trials, and also have enough coaching and mentoring by academia to make it happen. That's the reason our partnership with IIT Delhi is so very good. We have nine startups. Two of them are coming to close to commercialization. But however, our phase one learning has been that we need to really bring in a partner who can really help these startups to mentor, guide, commercialize, arrange fundings, and also help them to say, how do you go to the market strategy? Then also they should say, which industry, if it's a healthcare need, which industry is the right industry to help you to partner? So for me, it's a very, very strategic way of trying to outsource your back-end work for a front-end support. Third area, like someone rightly said, it's a problem solving. Industry faces lots of problems, no doubt about it. They know nothing wrong in industry, shamelessly admitting I have this problem, and then going to the education student and saying, can you solve this problem for me? There are brains in academia who can actually help it, and then that is how we should be able to leverage them to save. And last thing is, just as we have joint ventures, we need to create certain joint ventures between global institutions and Indian institutions. To, and then say, of um, uh, collaboration with the global education institution, institution could really make things fast track. And I also believe that um, our, our programs which we have, the two person CSR which companies have, I think we can try and every company spends two percent. But given if healthcare is one of the most important topics in the country today for the future, is there a way we try, the government tries to a scheme wherein they say, let's divert the two percent what companies are spending into certain specific courses and then have collaboration with academia and industry and make it happen. And I believe if you put it together, I, when I experience a working IIT years, Pfizer on its own can only do that much. If we can create a consortium of like minded people along with academia, we would be able to actually get more bang for the buck than what we do individually. So those are some of the thoughts I had. I'm being very fast because of the time frame, but thank you for inviting me, Dr. Gupta. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Shridharji. And uh, I, I take home two messages other than what we have already you have talked about. One is the problem solving. The problems from the industry should be communicated to academia and the bank of problems should be advertised. Maybe if they are not confidential, and let the academia come to the solution. I think that is win-win situation, wonderful. And also starting a joint venture. I think that's something, a phenomenal idea. And maybe uh, Dr. George Partney from IDMA uh, will address this also. And uh, on behalf of IDMA, I will request the IPA organizers to grant five additional minutes because we have just completed our time, but we started late. So, Dr. Pardney. Yeah, at the very outset, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Gupta. Um, you know, it's a pleasure to be on your subcommittee again. Thank you very much. Um, I'd like to thank IPA for this opportunity to, uh, you know, share our views and thoughts. And um, like a good student, I'm expected to be adaptive. And so I'm going to reduce <laughs> what I'm going to say to maybe not more than two minutes more. But let me just come to the basic expectations of industry uh, academia interaction. Now, the most important thing Dr. Martin Lang said yesterday from Novo Nordisk, he said that it's important that both the parties, industry and academia, must be aware of what they know and what they don't know. Now, um, our Madam Secretary, uh, Madam Aparna said, um, you see, policy intervention is very important uh, for us um, here because our industry is highly regulated. Uh, we have a very high cost and a very high effort to be put in before we bring a product to market. Um, the product that we bring to the market is in public interest. And since we have so many public institutions, uh, CSIR labs, all of them involved in this, we need to have a policy. So all the policy that we make must go into, um, you know, there, there must be objectives that these policies have to achieve. Now, why does industry go to academia for two reasons? Number one, for its talent pool, and number two, for technology. 
So um, I'm going to pretty much say that uh, talent pool is one basket that we must uh, try to improve the quality and size. Technology, we need to focus on having uh, academia building, developing good technology. And why does uh, academia need industry? I think that Dr. Chandrasekhar said, academia needs industry to go from the bench to proof of concept to pilot and then to the final market. Now, for these two partners to succeed, we need trust. And uh, Dr. Vinod Paul in his uh, talk yesterday again spoke about trust. He spoke about the trust between innovator, clinical organizations, but even for any industry institute partnership. And if you see the successful industry institute partnerships, the key element there is trust. And if you want trust, then all our uh, processes, all our measures, all our methods must increase engagement. So I recommend four baskets. Number one, talent pool. Number two, technology. That is talent is what we want to develop. Number two, we need resources and finance. That is what we need to make sure that we improve. We need a basket of trust. And of course, for trust, we need to increase engagement. So basically, um, all the measures, all the policies, all the uh, programs that we have to increase industry institute interaction must fall into one of these four baskets. And then finally, I think um, what I would like to say is that our measures of metrics of measurement of success of industry institute interaction need to change. It's less not the number of uh, you know, collaborations, not the amount of licensing money that exchanged hands, but it is the, um, you know, what it is, is the number of uh, the, the impact on the, on the total ecosystem that this interaction has made. An interaction, um, you know, with, a, with, a, with an institute in a certain area would definitely help the local environment of that whole area. So somehow the metrics of measurement is something that we need to change. So um, most of the other uh, points have been shared by the other members, but I just like to you know, summarize this into these four baskets. And if all our schemes, measures, and our programs fall into these two baskets, I think we will succeed. The time is now, our, our Department of Pharma has uh, you know, released an excellent draft R&D policy. Uh, some of us, we've been lucky enough to be able to contribute to the policy. And in fact, the measures of industry institute interaction, all of them mentioned in this policy falls into these four baskets of, uh, you know, attributes that we would like. So I would stop here. Thank you very much, Dr. Gupta, for the opportunity. Thank you very much, IPA, once again. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. George. And I fully endorse you that we have to change the matrix of measurement of success of what we have been talking of industry academia interaction for many, many years. And I would say the easiest metrics, number one, could be how many industry experts have gone to academic institution to deliver a talk and how many teachers from academic institution, as uh, Dr. Suresh mentioned, have gone to three months or two months or maybe whatever duration for training for exposure in industry and how many problems as uh, as um, Shridhar has mentioned coming from academic coming from industry have been passed on to academic institution and how many solutions have been provided to them and of course then all the other metrics which everybody has these are the easy metrics and then of course the hard code metrics would be there so we need to change the matrix so thank you very much uh, uh, George, for giving this very brief, and I would say this entire panel discussion in Hindi, what we call as a SAR, that means in a very small time, the encyclopedian information which all of you individually have and collectively it is unlimited, have been shared in just one and a half hours. And I would suggest IPA. <laughs> Now you organize another meeting as what George has mentioned that let us in the next meeting and have a matrix and that in that meeting only the measurements 
based on this matrix should be measured that how many road we have traveled and what is the road map next and how to do that and unless we have that matrix our success will not be measured and the thing which cannot be measured is 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 a not a, is a not a right approach so with this i thank uh, indian farmer alliance or uh, ipa and all the organizers i am not giving the names of all those idma oppi fiki cii and i see a lot of others uh, and thank you all and thanks all those who are listening to this and those who are not listening maybe they should listen to this because this is the gathering where anil call is here where uh, shridhar is here george is here the i where the naipur chairman is here and secretary dr kutecha is here and of course the leader and the driver of pharmacy institution in there and we have the experience from john hopkins so thank you very much thank you everybody and thank you ipa so bye